Okay, C. Lindelof videos. Today I wanted to talk really, really quickly about how you can use your TI Inspire CX CAS. And I don't know if you can do this without the CAS or not, so maybe you can test it and tell me. Um, but what, you, what I found out you can do is you can graph functions, I'm sorry, you can graph equations in terms of Y and instead of in terms of X. But you have to kind of trick your calculator into doing it. So the one thing that is really important before we start our little tiny journey right now is to make sure that your operating system is at least 3.2. And the way you would do that, uh, find out about that, is you would go to your home page right here. You'd go to settings and check your handheld settings. It'll say something like about handheld. And if you press, if you select that, then it'll tell you what you have. If you have something less than 3.2, doesn't matter how old your CAS is, just take a USB cable, hook it to your laptop, Go to ti.education.com, and you can find a free upload, and it will upgrade your system to 3.2 or greater. So, but you have to have, a, your operating system has to be at least 3.2, all right? So this is what we're going to do, if you don't mind. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to graph here. So this is what I did. I'm just showing you how I would do this in the calculator instead of on the laptop, is that I hit the home screen, go to graphs here. And now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go on to the graph somewhere. What you would do, well, you know, let's just do it. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to actions. And then, so I went menu, actions, actions to text. And you're going to see this little thing here. Move your cursor using your cursor pad somewhere inside the screen. And then type in that equation. And the equation that we had was x is equal to 3 minus y squared. y squared right and then what you can do is you can pick this thing up look you just pick this up you, you can get that little hand by moving the cursor and you can pick up this little hand and as soon as you cross the x-axis with it it appears so that's the only way you can do that now <clears throat> if you wanted to go back and relabel this you can go back and put in another text that says g of y is equal to this but you can't go into here and name this part g of y it has to be written in these terms all right the second one i had was this one and what i had was uh, g of y is equal to y plus 1, I think. So I'm going to do that again the same way. I'm going to put in my text screen. I'm going to put in my text here, and I'm going to put in x is equal to y plus 1. I'm just going to enter here. And then remember, you just got to pick this thing up. Sorry. Pick, whoops. Pick this thing up and cross the x-axis. As soon as you cross the x-axis, it shows up. So there it is. All right, there's lots of stuff you can do from here. We're, there's ways we can change the color of this and whatever to, to make this look better, but I defy any other calculator to be able to do this. This is actually really, really cool, but remember, you have to kind of trick your calculator into graphing it for you. The other thing we can do, because this is us, we, this could be an area problem here, and we could be asked to find the area inside here. So just to re, remind you, we can just go to menu and go to calculator and remember that we can type this thing in. So what I did previously is I typed in, um, let me show you how I did it really quickly. Control, no, I don't want to do that. This is going to hit um, 3 minus, let me do that again. That 3 minus y squared. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to define this. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to hit control, store. And if you don't mind, I'm going to call this f of y and at first it seems pretty anticlimactic because it just says done but then I'm going to do the second one and I'm going to do um, y plus 1 so I'll do my second function is y plus 1 and I'm going to name that control store and I'm going to name that g of y so g of y I'm just anticipating this showing up on your exam and then all I'm going to do is use the solve function that the calculator has and just do S O L V E solve and then open the parentheses this is important and then just set those equal to each other so f of y is equal to g of y but remember because we have it this way we want this in terms of y and hit enter and there we have our two solutions so this would help you all right look I hope this was really helpful um, if you have any questions or comments about the calculator or a way that I can do it better, please let me know. I appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks for your time.